Hello, welcome back to Erica's Little Welsh Garden. It's almost the end of April now and I have not uploaded a video in absolutely ages. Usually it's because I'm really busy with work commitments and stuff like that. But this time round, I have just been so busy working at home in the garden that I've not had the chance to actually pick up a camera. So in today's video, I thought I'd give you a really quick round robin with what's going on down at the allotment, um, in the polytunnel here, in the greenhouse, and some of the other things that I've got going on. So the first thing we do is head down to the allotment and have a look there. So down at the plot, you can see I've not really been up to much recently. The last thing I really did up here was get these onions and sowed some carrots about three weeks ago. And I'm really pleased to say that the onions are doing extremely well, but the carrots have germinated as well. And I think along the line, there is only one or two patches where the um, carrots haven't come up and I think that is where um, they've been disturbed by a cat or something like that but I'm just making sure that I come up every couple of days um, and give them a water so they establish really nicely um, because I don't know about you but we've been having a really lovely dry spell here recently so the weather's starting to get much better but it has meant I've just needed to make sure I keep an eye on getting everything watered. So there is one thing that I've planted since I planted those onions and sowed the carrots a couple of weeks ago, and that is some first early potatoes. I've put them in this seaweed raised bed. I put seaweed underneath the soil and then a mulch of seaweed on the top. So really interested to see how this bed does this year. But, um, the potatoes are first earlies, but I had planned to put some Sarpomera main crop potatoes in this bed because Sarpomera are a variety of potato that grow really, really big, but they're also blight resistant. So perfect for my kind of wet Welsh summers. Um, but when I picked up the bag, I thought it was um, a Sarpomeras, but it was actually a bag of first early um, colleen. So what I did was just put two rows of those in here so they can start growing. So I'm gonna have to think of a different plan for the Sarpomeras, but at least um, I've got enough room in this bed that I can plant something else along the front. And then maybe next year it will be ready for the Sarpomeras. So there's the allotment. Um, on the whole, I'm pretty pleased with how it's looking, but it definitely needs a good couple of sessions to get it kind of into tip top shape, ready for planting, you know, in a couple of weeks now. Um, but also I did forget to mention that I've also got the onions in the polytunnel down there, um, but they are completely overrun with weeds, as you can see. It's the same every year. You know, I can um, weed it as much as I want and then always just get the same weeds coming back time after time so when i take those onions out this year i'm just going to put some cardboard down and put a lovely um, bag of compost over the top and plant straight into that because it's the same every year and i just don't have um time to spend an hour weeding a one meter square bed to be honest um but I am really pleased with what it's looking like at the moment and it has actually been very neglected this year with the fact I've been doing so much here and in the early part of the years I was really hectic with work um, but as you can see behind me and um, this is probably one of the biggest transformations I've made in my home garden um, the the tier at the end of the top there that's covered in wood chip was actually an old pond um, completely filled with rubble um, cooch grass but also crocosmia and stuff so had some really good sessions getting that dug over then we've put cardboard down on top of that and then the wood chip this wood chip came free from all of the tree surgery that i've been having um, so i'm really pleased with that but also i have made a new bed here so originally there was a um kind of little little flower bed here with an old st a tree stump in it which as you can see the tree stumps still there um, but that was covered in um, again crocosmia and cooch grass and stuff so that's been uh, really dug over a couple of times um, and then this area here was just grass so we put some cardboard down got some logs here and have created a new bed now um, here which I'm so excited about both this area and the area up there though don't doesn't have very much soil in it. the soil that is in there obviously in the ground is very compacted so not going to be really worrying about planting anything in here this year or maybe even next I'll just let all of this thick layer of wood chip kind of um, rot down amalgamate with the soil and then hopefully um, 
you know, you know, maybe in the winter or something, I'll look at getting something planted in there. But the main thing at the moment is it looks much neater and tidier than it did before. Um, so that is really exciting. But also you might see in the background, I've got a couple of fruit trees as well, which I couldn't resist buying. Um, so I, I seem to be collecting loads of fruit trees at the moment and um, I'm gonna have to think of a plan of where they're all going to go. And actually, I've already got a plan. They're gonna be going down in the forest garden at the very end of the garden. But anyway, you head over to the polytunnel now and have a look what I've got going on. And then I'll meet you back here at the greenhouse and you can see how overgrown it is. So welcome to the polytunnel. As you can see, it's looking pretty bare at the moment. On the um, right hand side here, I've got some onions. Uh, now these onions were actually started off in modules at the same time as the onions down at the allotment. Um, but these ones stayed in their trays a couple of weeks longer and these only went out last week. So um, they're establishing pretty well, but I think they will catch up very quickly, especially being in the polytunnel. Down the middle, we have a row of garlic um, in the centre, and then down both of the sides, we've got some onions. Uh, these were actually planted in October, so you can see the difference. <laughs> planting in October and overwintering and planting at the beginning of the year, it's definitely much um, quicker and easier to get them planted in October or in the autumn time if you can um, but yeah these ones in the middle are looking a little bit leggy but now we're getting longer days hopefully they will get quite strong and pick up pretty quickly um, and on the right hand side we've got nothing growing in here at all um, but the biggest achievement that I've made in here this year is to get my drip irrigation installed I bought this I don't know if it was last year or early this year but I've only just managed to get it installed and it's absolutely amazing um, over on this side here I've actually um, buried the drip irrigation underneath this compost as I planted these in um, but as you can see in the middle I've just left it on top now I had planned on just getting it completely um, buried as I planted things into it but then Liz Zorab um, over at By The Farm she's used this drip irrigation for quite a few years now I linked her video actually when she installed it um, above now in the cards and down below in the description because it's really informative but she mentioned that actually if you're not careful it can get clogged up with the clay particles and things like that and then it's not so good so I'm not too sure what I'm going to be doing there but the main thing is I can actually um, get up in the morning make my coffee turn the tap on you know from the house and it will start watering up here so that for me is a really big win so there you go, that is what the polytunnel is looking like at the moment. But I've got a couple of things up here if you want to see what I've got growing in here. So at this end of the polytunnel, I've got a little makeshift gardening kind of shelving unit going on. I'm not planning on keeping this up here forever, but since I've not got anything growing below, I thought it was a you know, perfect place to be able to put some plants as they've grown on from the greenhouse, ready to be planted in the polytunnel. So I've just got two trays of um, tomatoes, a few different varieties but to be honest I'm not really sure uh, they are all labelled but I actually picked these up from Liz Zorab she had loads growing and offered me some so I thought perfect so I've not actually sown any um tomato plants myself this year but I am going to have to make sure now that I um, grow some plants for her to give us a good trade um, but I've also got two cordon trees now I picked up five um, no it was six cordon um, fruit trees from Gardening Express I think it was like £19.99 for six cordon trees and um, I thought I'll give it a go you know who knows I didn't know if it was a bit of a scam to be honest but they arrived um, at the weekend and I've potted them on um, so this one here is an apricot early orange, never grown an apricot tree. When I actually ordered these, um, these uh, cordon trees, I thought they were all apples. So it wasn't until I'd actually was um, planting them that I realised. So this is an apricot early orange. I think from reading something about it, I think it is self-fertile, um, but it does um, help if you, you know, use a brush when it... Um, when it flowers and the one behind it is a peach and this one is called Inca and again it's looking really good it's got signs of life on it with um, green shoots at the top and with a peach all I know is if they get cold in the winter they can get peach 
curl or something, leaf curl. Um, so I've just put them both straight in the polytunnel to begin with. And as they're cordons, I'm wondering if I can kind of, you know, grow them along the side of the polytunnel. Not sure it's going to be a bit too humid though. So I'm definitely going to have to do some homework um, before they get planted. So this bed here, just outside the polytunnel, is where I put my first lot of potatoes in this year. Uh, the variety is Rocket, and as you can see, a month on, they are growing really nicely. I also put a really good layer of seaweed in this bed as well. So it'd be really interesting to see, you know, how all of these potatoes do with the seaweed. Um, but they are doing so well, and considering this is actually quite a shady bed, I know we're in full sun at the moment, but actually it only gets about three to four hours of full sun a day. So a lot of the time is spent in in the shade but potatoes can actually grow really nicely in the shade so we'll see how that harvest does but I can't wait um, to get these ones harvested. Welcome to the greenhouse. I've got a little bit more growing in here than I do up in the polytunnel, but I've also got an absolute mess going on in here at the moment. So unfortunately, I can't turn the camera around and show you what is kind of going on in my bed because it's an absolute tip and quite frankly, I'm embarrassed. Um, this area of the garden is really kind of the last area where all of the gardening stuff gets dumped and it's a little bit messy. So I'm really hoping to get myself a little shed or something like that next month. And I'm gonna put the shed outside and hopefully keep all of like my kind of gardening bits and pieces in there. But one thing I have changed this year is I've gone for the reusable container-wise cell trays, which to be honest, I've got um, them all already filled here and they've been doing so well and I really, really like them. So hopefully, over the years now, as and when the pots that I'm using kind of come to the end of their life, they won't actually be replaced. So I can be quite minimal in terms of all this bits and pieces that just end up making a huge mess everywhere. Um, so at the moment in the um, greenhouse, I don't have loads sown or loads started off, um, just a few bits and pieces really. So the first thing I've got is some um, courgettes here. Um, they're in the bigger container-wise pots, but actually they were in the, the, the lower um, size ones once they germinated, but I thought I would pot them on so I could use that one. And then, you know, hopefully in a couple of weeks, they'll be ready to go out into the polytunnel. Hopefully I can get a couple of those in down at the allotment as well, but I have been blighted quite a lot with slugs and stuff. So you know, I really want to have a good harvest this year. So if I can get them in the, um, you know, polytunnel growing pretty early, that would be lovely. Um, and then I've got some other bits and pieces, really not a lot. I've got some um, sweet peas and some nasturtiums. So at the top uh, where I showed you at the beginning of the video, I've got um, that old pond area. And I'm hoping this year, while all of that wood chip is starting to kind of, um, you know, rot down and stuff and make the um, ground really nice hopefully i can have like loads of nasturtiums and things like that trailing over in pots um so yeah i mean apart from that i've got lots of um squash seeds that i've sown but again they've not germinated yet so the main thing really at this stage is i'm kind of at the very beginning of a mass seed sowing and everything like that but I've actually been very busy kind of just getting the infrastructure put in place. And that is the most important thing because in the future, I can just worry about getting those seeds sown and I'll have millions of places to actually grow the, grow all of the plants in. So anyway, enough of what is going on in here. I will give you a better update next month when I've actually tidied it up in here. But I'll show you some of the bits and pieces up in the garden um, that I have been kind of working on. I'm not sure if I've ever shown you this apple tree before, um, but I absolutely love it. No idea what the variety is, but it was left over by the previous owners. Uh, but I don't know if you can notice, it's growing on a little bit of a slant. And the reason for that is this whole area behind it was covered in brambles uh, just a couple of months ago, and they'd grown all over this tree. And the poor tree was growing on an angle and it was just trying to grow its, um, kind of limbs this way so it could get as much light as possible but it is covered in blossom so I really can't wait to see what it's going to be like this year. I have had a couple of apples off, off it in the past um, but fingers crossed we're going to get a really good crop this year and they're going to be really delicious apples. So this is another area of the garden that I don't think you've seen before because only a few months ago this was a completely massive 
bramble bush. So where you can see the edge of the grass there, that was where it finished. So all of the actual roots from all of the brambles are still in the ground, so they do need to be dug out. Um, but what I've been doing is actually just mowing over them with the lawnmower every time I've been mowing the lawn. So hopefully that will keep them at bay, but we will be getting those out as and when. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this area. It gets a lot of sun. So it'll be interesting to see kind of this year now how weedy it gets. But already the earth is getting so cracked. So I definitely want to get something in here. But whether it's just some small fruit trees that, um, you know, don't grow very big and don't kind of cut too much light out I'm not sure um, but you know I've got so much space and a lot of work to maintain a tidy garden here and now we're in another completely different area of the garden that has been ground zeroed and um, you may have seen this area and the area behind it in my um, forest garden videos so i'm not going to go into any more details there but if you're interested in watching that and you haven't uh, then i'll put a link above now but i'll also um put a link to that playlist in the description because really today's video i just wanted to show you what i'd had growing down at the allotment in the polytunnel and the greenhouse because i really have been so busy creating all of these different areas in my garden and clearing everything but one thing is so exciting about this is that there are areas of my garden that were completely overgrown that get full sun which means I'm going to be able to grow more vegetables at home and create a really kind of amazing productive garden so really really excited about that but anyway I'm going to leave the video here if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos please do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you're notified of all of my latest videos as ever YouTube have some videos up now on the screen that they think you'll like so please go ahead and watch those and I'll catch up with you in the next episode bye